Uh, are there any revisions to the agenda? Any public comments and correspondence? Um, any executive committee comments? I gotta be honest, I don't really know if I know what that is. I've used it sometimes. Um, I can't think of instances, but there have been times. Um, you know, for instance, I guess if I was diligent and thought this way, I, I might mention that at East Montpelier board meeting last night, we had student presentations. Ah, okay. They went really well. So I, I think that's where it would be just not necessarily pertinent to the agenda, but just some information that people might be interested in. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a nice thing to do, just showing the local and using it as for that purpose. Sure. Yeah. Would you like to do that now, or should we do that next time? Yes. I think that's not true. All right, sounds good. I will say that I think somebody had good maple syrup. Season. Can I have a motion to approve the executive committee minutes of March twenty second? Second. Uh, discussion. So I had, I had some comments, Lisa, on okay. 2.1. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if I have this right or not, but I, I think when we were having this discussion about nominating folks, <clears throat> we were basically trying to not um, come up with a slate of nominations that we were going to recommend the WCSU board, as opposed to electing a new chair and vice chair and clerk of the executive committee in that moment. Um, so it's not a big deal, but I just wanted to change the wording to be uh, in the second line, took motions for a slate of nominations to recommend to the WCSU board for the meeting on March 28th. March 20. March 28th. Okay. And then I just struck of a new chairperson because it's a slate of nominations. So, yeah. You know what I mean? And then in the next sentence, I took out of the executive committee. Okay. Just the very next sentence. Mm -hmm. And then I think it kind of makes sense after that. <clears throat> Any other comments or discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of approving the minutes of March 22nd, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions. Discussion agenda. Uh, board goals. So, um, just briefly to recap, um, we have three goal topics essentially for the 2018 to 2019 school year um, that were prioritized by the WCSU board. On March 28th, I think everybody here was there. Um, the executive committee is um, essentially tasked with fleshing these out for consideration for adoption by the WCSU board on June 6th. Um, so today, the objective is to review these three topics and maybe reach some agreement on how to move forward. Um, ideally, and this is kind of my thinking, but I'm open to suggestions by anybody, but um, ideally it would be good to have some draft language to share out with the district boards so that they could review at their district meetings in May. Uh, and then we would finalize on May 30th our meeting, um, tentatively scheduled at this point, for recommendation to the WCSU board on June 6th. Um, so just a couple of general comments. Um, subject to the concurrence of the, the, the boards in the SU, 
Um, it seems to me to make sense for the WCSU board and the district boards to adopt at least these three goals in common um, for sort of harmony and coordination across the school system. Um, so if there's no objection to that, I'll kind of proceed with that intent, but I understand people may want to sort of comment on that um, at some point. Um, and then for the sake of expediency, I took a stab at drafting what was in the packet, mm -hmm. basically just based on the notes, you know, from minutes and from the AGS report and kind of what I was hearing at the meeting. Um, this is page four. That's page four, yeah, and, and five, yeah. So. So, I, yeah, any discussion or suggestions, thoughts, comments, yeah. In terms of um, um, goal just adopted by uh, the local boards, uh, I think local boards are also developing their own goals, so it's not, not, it's, it's not exclusive. I think we should make that clear. That's right, yeah, um, and I, I have been, if this has come up in meetings, I've said, like, uh, obviously, you know, there may be uh, a couple or more, you know, school-specific goals um, that different boards might have, so I mm -hmm. think that makes sense, I agree. Um, I do think having more than five goals is gets unwieldy, but um, so there may be some issue there. But okay. <clears throat> so relative feedback relative to your really what anyone draft. wants to suggest. I put this out there just for the you want to go by for the sake of trying me? to uh, yeah sure. Me. I mean just sure. yeah. But I had in, in goal one the only thing I had. <laughs> And it may just be me, but the term operating model, so reform operating model or adopt a new one. I, I understand policy governance, and that's a, I guess it's a model. Um, I, I just don't know if collectively we would come up with a better way better language to use? I know it's nitpicking, but... No, no, no. You know why I did not choose the word governance? There, I had governance first, but I just feel like people's antenna go up about Act 46 and consolidation, and mm -hmm. they start to sort of think, like, what are we actually talking about and trying to do here? Um, so, I mean, governance kind of makes sense, actually, but as long as it's clearly understood to be in the sense of how we operate as a governing body. Well, <coughs> excuse me. So I, I'm not I'm not thinking governance. I was thinking more how we currently operate. I, I, I don't know that I don't know what our model is. Like how we run our yeah. meetings. Is that basically I, I don't know. what we're talking That's about right. here? But so I, I'm just saying yeah, reaffirm it. how we currently operate or do we wanna look at a new way of operating? So it's not saying, saying yeah. governance, it's just how we are. Because to me, policy governance is a way of, op as an operational, this is how we operate. The system. It's, it's, it's a system. It's a different system. system. But yeah. there's no system so to me, for what we do. So I don't know if you just say operating system instead of model. Yeah. I, it, it, I don't want to try to be too wordsmithy, but no, it's fine. to me, when I saw model, it created confusion for me. Who creates a, a uniformity? You're saying using this model, and I would probably say there isn't really uniformity about how each board runs their meetings, other than I think Robert's rules. Um, I would say actually, like, there's pretty uniform. Yeah, yeah. I don't. There isn't. I would go with what Dorothy said. There isn't a name for it. Yeah. But um, I'd say that probably eighty percent of mm -hmm. how the meetings run. People run it with different styles. Let me give you that, and I think yeah. that's what you might be thinking of, Chris. I think the style. But the format of the meeting, the way the meeting flows, the agenda structures, mm -hmm. um, the reports, um, I mean, I think that's something so that's the, really unified. So the, I think policy governance is, is a different philosophy, maybe of how to, or how to run an organization. Yeah, not necessarily a meeting, but no, not, a not, whole not necessarily organization. A it's a, yeah. Yeah, and there are others actually too. I mean, there's one called Appreciative Inquiry. Um, there's a couple other the names of which escape me, but um, which so I, I never can remember, and I don't go to look it up. Is how United Way, which they have a very, right. they have a they they get a lot of compliments about their 
and positive research on their go governance model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, so there's a lot of different ways of doing it. I guess my sort of feeling was, um, and I guess I'm asking the group, like, my feeling is that we don't spend a lot of time kind of um, examining or thinking about the way that we operate as boards. Um, so I sort of saw this goal as an opportunity simply to do that and to kind of evaluate how we have been operating, which is the first sort of activity that I put here. And then, you know, to evaluate other ways of doing it and then figure out, you know, if there's one we prefer, basically. I think so, that yeah. would be helpful. Mm -hmm. I think the way you just said it there is pretty would much. be the way to write it. Examine uh, how we currently okay. operate and, tape, and, ex <laughs> and, ex and, and explore other ways of operating to, to, I don't know, to, to, to look for a, a best approach or something. Like that. I, would, I would like to, I, I appreciate that. I think <coughs> that that is sort of the spirit of this, but I, I would like to have some kind of decision point or like time limited thing that we're working towards. Yeah, I think the June nineteenth. I, I think the timelines. <coughs> it's just, and and I apologize because I try never to wordsmith, but to me, model <laughs> creative confusion. I think that's kind of what I we're didn't here understand for, what it, I just didn't understand what model was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think we had a model, even though we might be similar. I don't know if it, I wouldn't say we have a model. We have a way of doing things. Have a culture. We have a culture. Maybe a philosophy yeah. or system. I don't know if we have a system. I don't think, yeah, I don't think, I don't think so. Yeah. So examine how we currently do things, and um, so I have um, look for by June 19, 2019. Examine how we operate. Evaluate other board operating practices, and then I guess uh, some way of saying like you know decide among them. You know, I, I can try to reword that or determine steps forward or something, something like that. Yeah. Is this a, is this something that the um, school board association can help with? They do. They, um, I, my, they have a new person now, so that actually gives me some hope. Uh -huh. The previous, I would have said no. Yeah. I would look for outside of people to come in and do that work, um, just because. Yeah, well, it's not the advocate, it's the knowledge of how it actually plays on the ground mm -hmm. and to know how that works. Um, yeah. I mean, that was one, when Laura Soros did that work <coughs> and uh, before she started working again for v, started working for VHI, she had both, she was a good trainer because she did the work and then did the, you know, and was living it day to day in her board work and then and could talk very authentically. For anyone to hear from a peer or a colleague that says this is what we're doing, good, bad, or indifferent, yeah. I can tell you how it's affecting us. Well, I think I think there is some expertise with policy governance, but it, it might be helpful to, especially with other systems, if we want to learn about those. Yeah. Um, and the and the other thing I was going to say is that I, I would be in favor of either an executive committee or some other existing committee to take this on as opposed to forming a new committee. Okay. That was my thought as well, um, mostly because of timeliness. Mm -hmm. Well, I also think should um, a way to get community input into you know because that that's an impact on uh, mm -hmm. how we operate uh, in past our community. So at least have some type of either get community or a couple of community members to add onto existing committees for the purpose of dealing with this and addressing this. Um, can you expand on that? Like, what what yeah. would the what would community members bring to the table? Well, the by community, way? well kind of like what Bill was just saying about how uh, uh, you know you have the recipient, community members are a recipient um, of how we operate, mm -hmm. uh, and they could offer some things from saying how they think we may be operating poorly, mm -hmm. uh, and how they would like to see things differently. Um, you know, it would probably be a particular community member who goes to board meetings on a fairly regular basis. Um, or someone who's a community activist, I think we'd probably have the greater uh, experience in terms of addressing things like that. Right. But, you know, we can 
we can come in a, somewhat in a vacuum until we have community members come in. Right. I kind of like the idea of like, and I know there are some people in Worcester, for example, who have experience serving on boards mm -hmm. and maybe would have some like, you know, direct experiential insight into that. Um, I'd be a little less sort of, you know, confident that someone who just attend the meetings, you know, even if regularly. Do you think that two o'clock yeah. would be? Maybe. Then I'm wondering if she's going to want to focus on that community engagement goal and if that's where we get sort of people's input on maybe this and but, goal two. And, see, I'm not seeing necessarily separate though mm -hmm. um, because how the board governs itself can either enhance or discourage community engagement. Well, Doc can weigh in from the training we went to the other other weekend. Um, but one of the takeaways I had from there is community. This is my takeaway. Community engagement has got to be separate from board meetings. Board meetings are not the place to have community engagement. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it's just not the place to... You, you want community members to come and hear what's going on and have an opportunity to say, but I don't think that's a format for community engagement. No. And actually, so I'm, I'm going to pipe in here. And, uh, as you guys all, as you all know, that's, this is my work in my dissertation. And I was telling you this the other night, Chris, and it's coming, a lot of it's come from the public access maps. You've got to meet Matt Lick Lickinger. I never say his last name, Lickinger or Lickinger or something. Um, but right in his work and Nicole's work, who was training with him, and they've written some books on this, is that having public engagement at a board meeting is not the place to have it because the power structures aren't correct and having the type of authentic engagement you want to have. You actually need to have it outside the power structures. doesn't mean the people that are part of that can't be part of it, but they should not be running it. And that you have, you empower others to help you do that and you'll get more authentic buy-in and, and better information. And what does that look like in practice? I'm just curious. Yeah, but, but, and usually, if you look at like work that uh, some of our colleagues have done around the state right now, I'm just going to go to Essex, they've had the board empowered, and there's one or two board members on the committee, but there's a lot of other stakeholders that are part of the committee that have built, they're doing their public engagement work. And they're gathering the information, they come back and give reports about it, they, but they, they have students on it, they have other community members on it and they run everything that's very thick engage engagement which as you hear from Susan all the time she uses the word community circles mm -hmm. something that we did in the we did two day two times in the forums you, those were yeah. versions of community circles um, two ones where you do something thin what we're doing whether you, you have a booth at a community event or you do an electronic survey and you're trying to gather information and so it's not a it's but it's it's really important that they're really structured well and they're facilitated well and they aren't just a come and talk. It's a, it's a way of, of gathering the information. And that's really from the work that, the work that I've been able to research is that it is so important that you do it right or you don't do it at all because if you do it poorly, it'll do more harm than doing none at all. And uh, it's, the, the research is pretty clear on that. Well, I think some of my dots smack me upside the head if you disagree. It's, I don't get things right. But um, some, a lot, many examples they used was groundswell. So it was community level up. It wasn't school board down. And I, I have a feeling, in fact, I'm, I'm playing around with multi-year budget as a topic or school safety as a topic. Um, but for the engagement and community involvement to operate well, to operate effectively, it, it can be better that it operate outside of open meeting law. So if the school board is running it, empowered it, formed it, is requiring reports back, it must be run by open meeting law. And that part of my takeaway is open meeting law in, it, it makes, complicates community engagement. And if you can operate outside of open meeting law, so community members feel perhaps more comfortable, it's less, and there's still structure, yeah. but there's less legal structure to it. And, you know, 
um, people can kind of come or not come. Um, it, it can be a little organic on what they're interested in, their involvement. I, I don't know enough, I just have some impressions, but I had an overall impression of if you want community engagement, figure out a way other than school boards to do it. And for all the school board people there, I didn't hear anyone. The, the thing I liked was the Essex with the students. Yeah. They had student trained facilitators mm -hmm. that ran community mm -hmm. engagement stuff, and it was separate from school board stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they, the community was interested in certain things about the school, and they would make a group, and these students facilitated them, and they reported to the school board, but there was no formal requirement that they report to the school board, or the school board didn't say, we want to know about this specific topic. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do to figure um, it out. Yeah, but. because every town is so spread apart to, um, to be able to facilitate some kind of gatherings and so forth. I mean, Worcester is the best situation, <coughs> situated one, and you have those, well, one of the things when I went to one of those facilities, those like, public engagement meetings when it was up in Lindenville, and they talked about places where <coughs> The public <clears throat> randomly got together. I mean, it was always like Worcester. It was Wednesday afternoons or Wednesday noon. They have a lunch. Everybody comes <coughs> to talk about what they want to talk about. It could be schools. It probably isn't always schools. But if we, if there's somehow we can get um, a group of people, I was just thinking by town, but I don't think it's necessary to be by town. I think it, you need to find some topics Maybe that topic, people right. are really interested in, and it, it doesn't have to be just Worcester people or Middlesex people or whatever. It can be whoever wants to come and, and really dig into this topic. And I think the difficulty is finding a topic where you have you know, a good number of people wanting to find, find out the I say problems loosely, and then look for solutions, or resolutions, or whatever you want. But I don't know how you find those topics. So, I mean, Harwood's done that too with their youth circles. Uh -huh. uh, they've done a really good job of that with, with five or six towns they serve in Washington West. And they do, it's very much what you say, Dorothy, it's, it's topic specific, not town. And they move around. Yeah. But the kids run it. And it's very powerful. And if you know anything about Up for Learning, which used to be um, YATS, and we've, we've worked with that at U32, the kids are trained through that to conduct these community. And it's very powerful. And well, and, and I would love to see the kids run it and the kids organize it because um, they have a stronger interest right now while they're there. And they can bring some of the adults into the 21st century. You know, so, uh, I think it would be better. What's the connection to translate that community engagement into board policy or board action? So the board can either take it or reject it, the information they get from their community engagement, and the board can say, is this something we want to work on? From the information they get from the community engagement, it's information. And one of the things that in the literature is that it, it actually gives the board a good place to be a, we can listen to this, we're getting information about it. It doesn't mean we have to act on it or, or we could we could act on it. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes away that that authority of because the board could feel there's a two way street there of having the board doing it in an open meeting of feeling the pressure, okay, we've got some people here telling us we need to do this and do we really need to do it? Or is it, oh, we don't agree with them, we can see why from our point of view, and then saying no to it, and people like, well, why do we do all this work with your board? Um, Isn't that still true, though? I mean, because you have the community coming out to engage in a process that they are hoping is, I would say hoping is going to result in an action, because folks don't usually get together with them, you know, to address an issue without the hope of a solution, I think, to the issue. So. I don't think you can so get away I, I would put you to the people that the research I'm reading mm -hmm. to ask that question. I can't answer that question for you. Okay. I guess what I so you know, I took us off. No, 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 it's quite right. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 well, I think it's <coughs> <coughs> 
the topic, I don't know who selects the topic, number one. That, that's a, it just, I assume it happened somehow. Well, for Essex, they had a very poignant one because they were merging with Westford and the two SUs, right. and they said, we want to find a common vision yeah. of what we want for school. Mm -hmm. But there are some topics that are going to go on and on and on. There won't be a concrete resolution that can be taken to the board. My thought is some of these problems we know go on in a sense forever. We're always having to address them. And through time, I, you would have a variety of people and generations and so forth. But you would also have a variety of Hopefully, potential actions. That's right. Yeah. As they come yeah. along. And, I, I, and you can, yeah, the same group doesn't have to stick with one topic. If you get another topic, they might kind of, oh, well, maybe we want to talk about this topic and then different people will join it. I mean, I can see it as quite an organic kind of thing, but getting it going is the hardest part. You don't think there's a, the Rock Humanities Council does this Wednesday lecture series, uh, which is almost sounds like we're talking about in each county, it's, you know, it's done by county, uh, and they put out a brochure every year and they list them all. Uh, and it's, it, you know, they haven't usually in libraries or things like that, but it's a topic that uh, people come in and lecture on. So um, it almost sounds like. It almost fits that community. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It seemed like the groups that had the good engagement established had like a regular location, a regular day, a regular time. Right. It wasn't a warned meeting. No. There was there was no set no agenda. agenda. Although right. people might talk around town and go, hey, you know, let's I don't know, let's talk about fixing the potholes mm -hmm. this week. And a whole bunch of people are like, yeah. And they come and they talk about it. And then you know, if it's to the select board or the town, whatever, um, it's it's a way of getting input from the community, um, but it, it empowers the community to decide what it is they're interested in. And then, from my perspective as a school board member, it's more likely, instead of coming with a um, a concern or a complaint and voicing it and what are you going to do and you're like I, it, it becomes more that we've talked about this here's some possibilities we're really interested in exploring this and that's what comes to the board so it's a concrete request we you know would you there's interest in the community you know on adding Italian teaching Italian in the elementary school um, We'd like the school board to look at the feasibility of this. Here's what we've gathered. You know, we we would like to explore this. Well, the when you, when you think for about the school it, board, it's a concrete thing. We need to add this to our agenda to talk about. So I just want to. I, I think we're kind of. Can I just say in, one in, more thing? Sure. When you think about it, it doesn't have to be limited to the school. It can be and en en encompass the towns mm -hmm. and and the town problems, and and they are similar in many ways. Our, our uh, select board chair was there because she wants to get community engagement going in the town. So um, maybe it's a mistake to be narrow-minded, pushing it just towards the school. I'm not saying to for sure include everybody, but just make that a thought over the side. So I think we're kind of engaging in the conversation that I would imagine would occur in trying to come to grips with goal three, which is what do we want to do with community engagement? What does that mean? How does it look? Um, you know, I guess, Chris, just to respond to your suggestion in particular, um, the, I know like in Worcester, for example, like we are really grappling with how we're going to structure community engagement around, you know, the issues that we face as a small school mm -hmm. and some of the things that are probably, you know, maybe coming down the line through State Board of Education and the Agency of Education and what it means for Worcester. And so I'm kind of leery of, <coughs> kind of um, burning people's interest and, in, you know, community engagement capital in sort of a nuts and bolts in the weeds conversation about how the boards might operate when we have this sort of more global sort of issue to tackle in, in Worcester in a sense. Um, so that's one. Two. What do you mean burn? Why do you think we burn interest? Just because you know that I think the people who might sort of uh, we might draw into a conversation about um, board governance might be also the people most likely to to lead or participate in or speak 
um, or get other people involved in a community engagement process, you know, which we have a much more burning sort of topic and priority mm -hmm. in Worcester, right? just in Worcester, perhaps. Um, but I also want to say that I feel like the on this sort of, because we haven't really been doing a lot of this self-evaluation of late or sort of really taking a hard look at this, I feel like it's almost for, we're at a blank slate point, you know, with this goal. And I also feel like with community engagement, as this conversation kind of um, indicates, we're also at a sort of blank, blank slate moment mm -hmm. where we're starting to ask questions about what do we want to do here and how do we do it. Um, so I wonder, and I also would just point out that goal three, community engagement, you know, I, I, I purposely made that a very brief timeline. Like I'm hoping that we can come up with a purpose and a strategy for board level community engagement by November, um, which is many months before we would be finished with the board governance mm -hmm. process. So we could build in or sort of talk about how we might engage the community and talking about whatever we're coming up with on the board governance topic. So, um, I my, think we should focus on getting some community engagement going in some way. And as that begins to move forward, you can ease part of that into the governance operations discussion. Mm -hmm. But focusing on that first makes it kind of narrow and people don't get the idea of, I mean, they probably don't really care about, at this point, have they, they don't even know the difference between policy governance and any other kind of governance. All they know is we, is we versus them. Yeah. So I, if I had the choice, my focus would be on actually getting community engagement running smoothly and up and people excited about it. And then some of these other things will just kind of naturally go along with it. I, I think focusing on the governance may be something we want, but I'm not so sure it's what the communities want. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, so just to try to, to maybe tie up goal one here so we can <coughs> move on. Um, I have some different wording. Uh, it sounds like there's some consensus that the, it's appropriate for the executive committee to take this on, but I want to make sure everyone is. Or another one, who, or board chair. Or the two. Uh, or be a chair of the uh, a committee of the board chairs, I think, would be the other sort of logical. Can I just yeah, say something ahead. as you say all this? Um, if you take a look at, I'm going to switch you to another piece of paper just so you see it. Inside of here is the calendar, and we haven't finished it. And there are still three committees to be scheduled. Right. It's on page uh, ten, mm -hmm. and we have negotiate. We you know we have a bunch of different things going on this year. Yeah. <coughs> We're going to have two negotiated contracts coming back. Um, so, yeah. As your superintendent, I have a hard time recommending you make any more committees, frankly. Mm -hmm. Not because of my time, just because of all the different things. Your, your board members, remember it's last year? Good. It's going to happen again this coming year. Is board I, chair on this calendar? No, it's not. Yeah. There is no board chair meeting. To I, I was actually going to suggest that we might invite board chairs that don't currently participate in the executive committee to attend our next meeting mm -hmm. so that we can kind of have the, 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 but, but not on a regular basis, I guess, is sort of the idea. So come to agreement about the draft. Just so that we, yeah, exactly. So we're all on the same page. Everyone has a chance to weigh in mm -hmm. on the Great. wording and the kind of, you know, yeah. timeline. And but, but given that, that we don't have a calendar of board chairs meeting regularly, I would recommend executive committee. Okay. With, but with inviting board chairs to participate to me, on that to aspect of yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah, we can certainly have a standing invitation yeah. for them, although that may, I guess it depends on who comes, whether we have So we're going to have to warn it as a full board meeting. A full board meeting? Yes, because once you have, you have six of you, <laughs> yeah. and you'll have another four, four, and then which will be ten, which is a quorum. Ten's a quorum. Yeah. Because so if we get four of the then we would have a, we would have a quorum. Um, but I don't think, I, mean, I, I don't think that's a problem. I'm saying it's a problem. I'm just, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, just we can make it clear to everyone what it's about and why we're doing right. it, and you know, then they can. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and if it turns out that a lot of people show up, people are picking up on the meetings that they want to come. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no. Um, yeah, I would support an executive because then 
we could start, you know, we could conceivably start work tonight, I'm not suggesting that, but if we want to look at multiple models at our next executive committee meeting, we could assign a person either a specific model or to f find a model, and so we each bring in the skeleton of a thing to consider. Mm -hmm. I just think we're already configured. It's extra work for us, but we're configured to kind of hit the ground running and get going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I, I want to skip to goal three, I guess, since we've already started talking about community engagement, and we'll come back to goal two. Um, so again, just to reiterate what I just said, you know, I tried to, I, I think we're at the point of like, we don't even know what we want to do with community engagement exactly, so it's really at a very, you know, first stage. Uh, sort of sort of space, um, but I didn't want to actually draw out trying to figure out what we want to do. So the goal is really just about figuring out what our goals are. I guess you could put it that way. They're all that way to some extent. But um, so defining a purpose and strategy for board level community engagement by November, you know, and that's actually really quick. So. I think if um, if strategy includes seeking out training opportunities and how to get better at it, then mm -hmm. I, I support a quick timeline. It just just from, from your guys' recap of this one training you went to, it's clear to me that there's more we don't know. Oh, yeah. But the training I had when I went up to Lindenville was um, quite, it, it was arranged differently, and I got more out of it. And the Lindenville one. Yeah, I really like that. That was mm. a really good one. Who, was, who did it? The same people did it, but yeah. there was some, whatever their agenda was slightly different. Mm. And maybe the groups that we were sitting in were smaller and what we were asked to do as a group. And the other thing they did um, at that one, <coughs> uh, we happened to be late because the weather was bad, but apparently they made people could not sit together who worked together. Mm -hmm. So they had these small groups of four that were very different and then you were given a task. And, and that really gets people thinking more and talking more. Um, and I liked that part of it. And maybe, I don't know how much it costs to have, or, or we could uh, contact Susan to find, because I think she was at that one. She's was a lot about it. Well, they're they're so they're they're, they're it's just they're really small. It's, it's a really small <laughs> group. I was meeting with the Friday before that meeting. The day yeah. before, I was with Bruce Mallory, who runs New Hampshire, listens out of, out of yeah. New Hampshire because yeah. I'm trying to work with him for my work, and he already knew everything that was going on in Vermont. I mean, it, it is a really small community because there aren't a lot of people in the nation that do this work. Yeah. I mean, it, it is under probably 50 people. Mm -hmm. So you know, if and it just have to have people go and, and and do it the way they did, force people not to sit together, which is really, I mean, I'm talking about with our teachers and our administrators, not the public. In the public, it's nice to, well, there are ways to do it, you know, with, uh, give everybody a different color sticker when they come in and then they get distributed unevenly or whatever, but there are ways to do it. Yeah. And they can teach you how to do it in a diplomatic way. And then I just I, I I really liked that that one was better for me. <clears throat> but then again, they probably approached it differently too. I, I like the goal and the short timeline because I I don't think there's consensus on what community engagement is. So, for instance, what we went to was, I, I feel like, was community engagement training. For some people, it's community participation in board meetings, which is different than community engagement. Mm -hmm. That's how community members participate in board meetings. And then there's getting specific feedback and information from the community that boards want. And those are different things. Um, so if, if we define the perfect, the purpose and the strategy and, and get better clarity around what is it we mean by that, you know, do, is what we mean, how do we get information that we want from the community? Because that's not community engagement. No. That's, that's getting well, so information from the community. That we want. We, so, the but if community we want, wants to give us their opinion. If we want community engagement, you know, it, 
for me, it's there's some different paths depending on what it is that we want to get done. You so I, I think to... we don't have to decide it here, but if if we've got that November timeline for the purpose and the strategy, that I think lets us right off the bat or fairly early next year reach clarity on what we mean and what it is we're trying to accomplish, and then it, we can proceed from there on. Well, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be that critical, but you got the November one. I was just reading that carefully. Board level <coughs> community engagement. Really, the boards are there as part of the populace. They're not organizing it, really. If in you're in front of engagement. I, I maybe, would, maybe it's just engagement is too narrow of what the goal is. The goal is. Well, I just think because people it, have different right. understandings of what that meant. So and maybe we should require to either use more words or broaden the concept of engagement. Engagement not being just the community uh, coming together and then, uh, as it was described before, at Essex and then filtering information, but also uh, community, community uh, participation, because there will be times when the board wants to do surveys and things like that, and if that's a community engagement, it shouldn't be something that's falling outside of our goal, because that would be one of our goals, I think, in terms of creating a, a, a interaction with the community for informational purposes, well, as would be engagement at a meeting. And again, I'm not looking for a solution to that. I'm just suggesting, to me, that's a good timeline and a good goal mm -hmm. to have the boards talk about what do they mean around that term. So then, by November, We've got a, a more, we don't have this community engagement and we're not sure what direction we want to go. We've got some clarity of this is what we mean and this is what we want, how we want to move forward. So if it's, if we like what the training dots done more of it than I am, but if we like that concept, then it's maybe how do we get some training so that we can start to do that, who we outreach to those kind of things. What is the, did you say some of our students, Bill, have already engaged? Yeah, some of our kids, that we will, with, there's a couple of things. With restorative practices that we have at U32, uh -huh. we have many of our students, so they're, they're trained in how to run circles. Uh -huh. Community circles is a form of a circle that happens in restorative practice. Um, so they, they can operate some of them. Some have been trained a little bit more in the work we've done with up, up for learning, but we want to bring more training to them. Uh, our kids, I'm not, I'm not worried about our kids. I mean, no, my question so. was, after you said that, is how could we arrange for some of those kids to do community engagement things with the supervisory union board? Oh, so we could, oh, we definitely could. And here's what is going to be most powerful for the kids, and we saw it. Um, the other night at U32, when it's a topic that they're passionate about, get them in there to lead it. You know, unless they're really passionate about running circles, they do a good job of running the circles, but they do it when it's something that's motivating them. So last year, when the seniors saw that the sophomores were having some real troubles, the seniors said, hey, and it was right as they were about to graduate, we're really concerned about the climate, and they took all the sophomores into community circles and ran them with them because they were really concerned that the climate of U32 stays the way it is, and that we do that, and they and they ran with it, and it was their idea. So it, this is what it might, it's a long story to say to you, Dorothy, they do a great job when they're motivated and it's their idea. They'll still could do a good job with it, but I think I want them to start to kind of well, think about the topics they'd want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, let's just not say come and do it. Let them kind of, I don't know, people who interact with them or so forth can, figure out what they would be passionate about yeah. so and Jody give Emerson, us a yeah. good example of it. Jody at, at U32, our assistant principal, she's the leader of all this work. Okay. Yeah, and I think this is exactly the conversation that has to be had. And I, I, that, that's what I was trying to get at with this goal is that, you know, I, I feel like we, you know, again, it's first principle type stuff. Like, what do we really mean when we're talking about community engagement? What are the different types? Like, how do we, what are we, are there areas we want to do more of, do better of, you know, these kinds of things. It's really that level of conversation um, that we're at. So I just wanted to set a goal and commit, you know, have the board commit to to that and be accountable to, to 
um, figuring something out by, by November, and then we'll figure out what next steps are from there. Um, and I guess I'd say, I, I'd say to the early gifts discussion on requesting them all boards adopt it, this would be a, 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 a valuable reason for that, that all boards, as an example, if they adopted this goal, there's then an expectation at the local or at the individual board meetings that there are discussions <coughs> around this prior to full board stuff. Mm -hmm. So people already come either with questions or suggestions or they've, they've kind of, gee, you know, we talked about it East Montpelier and, you know, this is the, you know, so that it, it's a richer conversation when everyone comes together and it's not so much starting at ground zero. And that raises an important question. Um, I, I put who's doing this, I put all of the WCSU boards, because I thought every board wants to do the, have this conversation if they aren't having it already. Um, but now that we're talking, I'm realizing that uh, while that's probably true and those conversations do need to happen at every board, it maybe isn't the best way to, to make sure that it's coordinated or organized or that it's all um, cohering into something that then is a product in November that we can work with. Um, so I guess I, I don't know if folks have suggestions on. Well, don't we have a carousel meeting in November? No, we have one in October. October. Yeah. October. Yeah. I think it's hard for the individual boards to have a meaningful conversation about community engagement without having had some training or been to what Steve and I went to. Um, how we could do it. Um, I know that Susan's available to hire, or maybe there's others. I, I, I would like to have some idea of, got some minimal training to the boards before they start trying to make decisions about this. So I have a suggestion about that too. I think it's a great point. Good, good. So the, the next item on our agenda after we get done talking about goals is to talk about the uh, possibility of a WCSU board retreat in oh, August. Okay. And one of, one of the topics that I'd like to suggest is that we might invite in Matt or Nicole, who are the trainers for both the Lindenville event and the one that, uh, that you both attended. I, I know Nicole, I, I worked with her for years um, and something of a friend. Um, so we might be able to get her or Matt to come and do, do part of that retreat. Um, but I agree with you, it'd be great to have everyone kind of at least have a common frame of reference for, for yeah. having the conversation. And, and, and yeah, and, and they could do some of the things that they did with us when we were in Linden that I kind of liked. Mm -hmm. um, I think they tried to do the same thing here, but you know, Matt, I mean, Steve and Floor and Shawnee all sat at the same, same table. They kind of knew each other. We did kind of break mm -hmm. up into one self selected groups, but I like the way they did it in Linden a little better. I think it was more instructional but then I guess the question is who are we going to who do we want to spearhead it or to make sure that it's moving forward or that is compiling whatever's happening into and, uh, and uh, well I my guess what question to you is it were you envisioning envisioning other things to take how long would be the, the retreat and were you envisioning other things to occur then because it may be that we don't want to get it like a shotgun effect. I have other suggestions for the retreat, but I really just brought them for discussion, not, not oh, as yeah, like a, yeah. you know, so. It could be multiple retreats. So it could, it could be. Like it's a multi-hour training, right? How, how long? Three, four hours? I can't remember. The one, the one up in Lindenville encompassed lunch as well in the part of the afternoon. I would say it was five, six hours maybe. Or yeah, easily. Long. My thought about it was to try to schedule a full day. Um, sometime in August, if that's not crazy. So. Well, maybe crazy, but we should still do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll get there, we'll get to that conversation. I, I think at the level we're at now, it's okay to leave it at all points. Because mm -hmm. it's just, but, but it's also, a common training, it's, it's just at the discussion level. And I would say once we get past, if it's November timeline stays the same, once we get past that point of a little more specificity, then it it would it would move be from all boards to a more you know a point person or a so a, a a particular group to then have a a a, a target to 
accomplish. And right now it's not so much, we're just trying to define things and reach it, right. have a common language and a, and a, a common vision. So it's more like we want everyone to participate. Yeah, in I'm comfortable about. leaving it the way it is. I, I think eventually it is probably gonna come down to either appointing a couple of people or it's gonna come back to this committee. Mm -hmm. Because we have representatives from every board here, so that's kind of just a place where we have a natural coming together. Are there any other comments on goal three? All right, let's do goal two here as time marches on. Um, this, this is the goal I actually had um, kind of the most challenges with um, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, One is that I was honestly a little uncomfortable after the WCSU board meeting with, with these three goals that got selected because at first blush, I didn't feel like any of them were student or learning focused. And so I felt a little uncomfortable having two really sort of board focused goals and one community focused goals and no you know, sort of student or learning focused goals. Um, as I thought about it more, I thought, you know, board monitoring is about how we wanna, how we wanna monitor the school system for effectiveness and accountability and all these things. Um, so, you know, to the extent that we can make this goal about um, the way in which we want to do that, particularly with regard to student learning or student outcomes, um, I think, you know, maybe may address that point. Um, we may also want to think about or suggest back to the SU board that we, we kind of reframe the title of this goal or something to kind of get more at that, that point. Um, but then the second thing I sort of ran into was that um, board monitoring is not just about monitoring the system and the administration, it's also about monitoring ourselves and holding ourselves accountable, you know, to the goals that we set and to the work that we're both required and want to do. Um, so, you know, I, and then I ran into this sort of, how do I make this about board monitoring and operational monitoring and student learning monitoring and so that's kind of where this is where I ended up but um, but just to give you some insight into you know what I was thinking about when I was wrestling with it this was the one I had the least the least, difficult. The least problem with <laughs> because it, it was a standing committee that's already functioning and working that we've so I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. It's more, it's more a question about what we mean by board monitoring. And then also, I guess, my larger point is that, you know, I think I kind of, I could see board governance and community engagement and student learning as a kind of tripod almost of goals that we would have. So that, again, that's why I sort of, um, it gave me pause, I guess. So a couple things, the committee's gonna meet tomorrow and we're happy to take any direction um, but we're going to, one of our agenda, the main one, I think, well, two, there's two. One of them is how can we support this goal and what do we want to do next? And I guess, not to speak for the committee, but I would I would like to see us adopt a calendar for this coming year, not, not just for, and, and build on what we did this last year. This last yeah. year we monitored basically two areas, you know, learning outcomes and, and financials. We might be able to add something to that or enhance what we've done in some way. And I, I, I'd, I'd like to do that just to be able to get onto the calendar um, of, the, of the SU board. Yeah, sure. And the other thing that we're going to do, and this, this goes right to your point um, about learning, is we want to go deeper into that, that uh, learning outcome report that we got. We, we feel like that was a good start, but we didn't really wrestle with it. For example, we were told we were not in compliance. Mm, right, right. We actually need to deal with that. Yeah. And so um, we're going to be thinking about how can we bring the ourselves and all of the boards back to that material and really understand it and understand it, try to understand the implications of it and, um, you know, just work with that information. Um, so we've actually given ourselves a little homework and assignment, and if that's successful, we think we might have have more for the boards to, you know, to go back to that. I could see going back to that report over the course of the year. We talked about maybe doing, breaking that into two sections over over the year. Or so just so that it's more present and, and, and we're, it's not just a one and done kind of, you know, because it's really at the heart of what we're doing here. And it, 
and it's all about learning. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Let me sort of take a left turn a second. And, and um, do you think the school quality committee would have um, something to say about what a goal in this area ought to look like? I mean, you've been talking about this already for months. Um, I probably should have talked to you about it before. Uh -huh. I'm realizing now. But. Well, I, you know, you know, how to how to best monitor the effectiveness of our school system is the start of it, and then and then. What do we do? You know, help setting up setting up action, right? So, what do we do with the information that we that we gather? Mm -hmm. I think is the sort of the next level of it. I think we also need to break it apart because if you say the effectiveness of the school system, that is sort of some parts of it, and um, that you as we did this year by getting monitoring on certain aspects. So, uh, you know, I, I imagine monitoring for each part is different in terms of what we would want and how often we should be looking at it and things like that. So I think setting up maybe a framework for, of, of breaking into the system into parts and what we think monitoring for each aspect of the system as a whole um, needs. And then, but then also you have to have an umbrella picture to make sure all the parts are working. Well, we have a fairly detailed you know, implementation plan and student mm -hmm. learning outcomes, and so that's already. But that's a, for students, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. I mean, on the operations side, we're a little bit, other than the financial work that the quality committee has already done, we're a little, <coughs> a little bit less, less uh, kind of organized along the lines that you're talking about, perhaps yeah. in terms of, and then also, you know, monitoring the board's work and holding ourselves accountable. I mean, you know, we can. There's enough dates in here that we can make a calendar to accompany these goals, the intent is to do that, um, so that as we have our carousel meetings, we're checking in with these goals at appropriate times um, and getting specific reports and taking decisions and so on. Um, anyway, now that's a, maybe perhaps beside the point slightly, but. Well, that's why when I opened up saying this was one I'm less concerned with, we've got a structure already operating in place so, I mean, I wouldn't be inclined to think our goal is to support and utilize that committee. So mm -hmm. if, if there's directions we want explored, we communicate those to the committee. I mean, I don't think we have a lot of work other than to acknowledge that there's a group that's there and commit to allocating time for them to share the information they've got with us and then decide how we want to incorporate it. For, for me, it's less about having to set something up and it's more about supporting something that's already in place. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that the, the charge that the School Quality Committee already has like functions, in essence, like a, like a goal? Uh, that's, that's what I would say, that we don't need to so when we talk board governance, you know, who should do it and what the, I think all that's in place. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a committee that's representative, um, that wants involvement, that's put in multiple years of work, that are, is already running with this, and not to subvert or, and subvert's a bad word, not to create a parallel path or something. We've got an org, we've got a group, that's functioning, operational, and enthusiastic. Let's, our goal should be to support and facilitate their work and um, uh, 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 agree or, or make arrangements to schedule them to regularly report. Okay, okay so let me ask a couple questions about that because I think that makes a certain amount of sense. But I want to ask, I, I don't know what the charge of the School Quality Committee is off the top of my head. There is not an adopted one, let me say that. What does it do? Why don't you tell us what you actually functionally do? We think we're exploring and, and in fact, building a, a monitoring system. Oh, oh. You know, system way, as way, a whole or student outcomes? Uh, well, we started with outcomes and then we're, and now we're proceeding beyond that. Okay. Uh, all the things that are, you know, important to how our, um, our school system functions, you know. So financial seem like a logical next step, mm -hmm. but there are other things that we could we could monitor as well. 
course, we don't want to go too far because the, you know, the model we've been using was, was basically somebody else's policy, governance policies. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to settle about, you know, what, what does the overall structure look like? But we are building a sort of a, a way to use evidence to evaluate is the is the school on the right track? Are we doing the right things? Are there things we need to adjust? So, so how do we turn that into a goal, though? Because I mean, exploring, you know, that's all great, but um, you know, what's the target? Like, what's the thing we want to measure ourselves against when we, in the spring, when we're looking back? You know, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head. Well, when we kind of need to base on it when we think things are functioning now. If, if you're trying to say, but we think it should be functioning at this level, and the goal would be to function at this level and develop steps to how to get that. I guess that's what that's actually yeah. what I'm asking because the school quality committee has already been wrestling with those questions. So. Yeah, I mean, broadly, I think we just want to enhance what we already we've already done this last year. Um, and that's either going to be doing more monitoring or more, you know, more policies or more areas of our system, or we're going to go deeper and or deeper on like learning outcomes. We, we, you know, we think we've got a good baseline and we're just going to continue to do more and we'll see if people find that valuable. You know, I don't know how valuable people found the, the financial monitoring. There wasn't actually a lot of engagement with it, but we also recognized it was a lot of information, it was the first time, and with some iterations, people get more comfortable with, with that and give us feedback. And do you, so it's been a U32 committee up until March, now yeah. it's a WCSU committee. Um, has the work primarily been focused on U32 facility? To date, or is it? Are you sort of looking at things globally? You yeah, know, globally. Online? I mean, the, the learning outcomes were their starting point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we quickly realized that it wasn't just our school; it was it had to be the whole system. Okay. Well, let me let me make a suggestion or ask a question of the group as a way to proceed, um, because just look at in terms of time in this meeting and what we can reasonably accomplish. Um, so on goals one and three, I have people's comments, and I can sort of try to tweak the the language a little bit. Um, to reflect what we've said. Are, are people comfortable if I try to do that and then get something out to the district boards for them to consider on, at their May meetings to discuss and to provide feedback if they want to do that? Or, yeah, know, so. sure. Okay. For goal number two, maybe Kari, you and I can follow up yeah. um, and talk about this a little more and try to figure out sort of what and so I'll, the, I'll make sure we talk about it tomorrow at the committee meeting. Yeah, great. Is, if, if we and I, be, I, I would love to come, but I will be in Calus, so, yeah. Well, it's before Calus, but... Is it? Yeah, 4 maybe 3. I can, yeah. 4 3 to 5 3. Yeah. Is it, I'm going to be here. here? Yes. Here. In, yeah. the, in the central in office? Okay. So will you ask the committee to gauge what they think their capacity is for taking things on? Yeah. Well... It actually, it's, it, it's really comes to me. Does it, okay. And this is where Matthew was going about board, about board piece. If you and I'm going to go back to my experience with policy governance. Not all monitoring <coughs> reports are written by the superintendent. Mm -hmm. The superintendent does the internal system, or delegates that. But the um, about what boards are doing and how boards are operating, or if you look at the limitations piece. The limitation policies under policy governance, those are usually done by board members, mm -hmm. in my experience. I don't know, Kari and, mm -hmm. and uh, Matthew, you serve boards with policy governance. But mine is, my experience from school boards and serving them is that board members really did the monitoring of the board's governance policies mm -hmm. and did the monitoring of the superintendent's limitations policies to say, is the superintendent staying in compliance with where there are limitations? No, that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. And that was, um, there was evidence that the superintendent would provide towards that report, but it was written by board members. The board members did a lot, and uh, sorry, I forgot Stephen as well has done, has been part of a policy governance board. So those pieces, the board members get into a lot of report generation. And, this, and the superintendent was in, for the operational, whether it be the, in our case, the student learning outcomes or ends of how we use policy governance and operations with inside the system, so like a financial policy. And I'm okay with you too. Okay, yeah, me too. Okay. Right. Let's do that. I think we have to, you know, we'll try to grapple with that question yeah. as well. Um, okay.
Okay, is there anything else on the, the goals before we move on? Can, can I just ask generally, Bill, is this helpful to have the executive committee kind of focusing the board's focus, the board's work, <laughs> instead of having all of the boards trying to work toward their own set of goals? Matt's been, been going around to different it's boards, and we've started to, we started to do our Berlin yeah. board goals, and, and Matthew said, well, maybe, maybe hold off a little bit and see what the executive committee comes up with, and we agreed to do that. Is that helpful to you? Going to channel some of this as opposed to the scattershot approach. It's much more helpful for it to be channeled. It is. Um, it's uh, and to get calendars out and to say when are things we're doing things. Um, that that is much easier to support. I don't feel like we're chasing down. It feels too much like we're reacting from the whether it's a principal or myself to a, or anyone that I task with doing the work to now it's more proactive because we can plan it out. Yeah. And we can look at it and say, oh, well we could do all that, but look at the, and I did this once to Kari uh, when we were doing the fiscal stuff because I was in a crunch mode and I said, I've got X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. And Kari said, Bill, you've known about this for six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't say it though, he was nicer than that. But basically it was the right thing to say to me. Like, you've known about it, you should have planned. you know, and. And so we got it done, but it's also being forthright if we know that out a year in advance, and this is, because I go back to my policy governance days of serving boards and policy governance, we had it mapped out. So like when, as I was the curriculum director, I had two or three policies that the superintendent delegated to me, and then he polished up, he or she polished up before it went to the board, but it was not 80% of my work, you know, was that report. I knew when that was coming. I could calendar, I can move my schedule, make sure that was taken care of. Um, and so to be able to do that and to keep, to be more, it, it actually made, in my experience, the meetings flowed better because you knew what you were going to do. You knew in a grand scheme a year out what you were going to be doing and it was probably 75 to 80 percent of the meetings. You didn't have react to this a week before. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Um, let's move on to 2.2, the WCSU retreat. So I guess I've already mentioned that the, the sort of idea here I wanted to throw out to the group was, um, you know, obviously we'd have to go to the SU board with this too, but um, whether we wanted to recommend that we try to have a WCSU board retreat. Um, again, my, my thought was that August is a good time at the start of the school year. It'd be hard to pull off any earlier than that, that's for sure. Um, I had a couple thoughts on things we, we might do. We already talked about having the two community engagement trainers uh, could, could come in and do a piece. I'd love to actually find, if it's, I don't know, Bill, if it's um, possible to do this in August, but to get some students to come in and do presentations or talk about topics they're passionate about or things that you're we're working on or accomplishing or excited about for the coming year or whatever it might be, I don't even know. Um, but just a way of, you know, having the board get some more time than 10 minutes before a, a meeting to kind of connect with what students are doing and what's happening at the school. Um, and then another thought was, um, I, I've worked with a, many, many times with a, uh, a consultant who kind of focuses on many different aspects of communication and um, relationship building and, and trust and different communication practices that build a strong foundation for results, essentially, for any organization. And she consults with nonprofits and um, for-profit uh, companies all over the world. She, you know, charges exorbitant prices, uh, really insane, but, um, but is willing you know, I've talked to her and she's willing to do something with the school system, you know, pro bono, potentially. Um, so she'd be another fantastic person we might be able to bring in to kind of, again, <coughs> give every board member a common frame of reference for, you know, how, how we talk about our internal dynamics, kind of, you know, norms and things like that. Yeah, it is, but it's also just kind of thinking about, you know, organizations and how they work and, and maybe trying to... <coughs> provide an opportunity for people to see it from a different angle mm -hmm. and sort of think about really like how we interact with each other and how we are making sure that our relationships are solid and these kinds of things actually has a direct impact on 
you know, what results we're achieving as an institution. Um, and it's been, and I've used, used her here in the U.S. And when I was in China, I brought her over there specifically to work with the, the team, and, uh, and she's phenomenal. So, so those are just some ideas. So I guess I wanted to ask the group <laughs> if the idea of a retreat seems like one we should pursue, if August seems like a good time frame to do that, um, and then any other ideas people might have for what we could do at one. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, Chris, go ahead. No, empty steel. So <laughs> I, I have interest, I, and I know others have expressed interest to me in having a full supervisory union board retreat. Um, so from, from my perspective, it's more less at the moment on what it's going to accomplish and more about when could it happen. Mm -hmm. And then my second thought of, was mostly around East Montpelier's experience, but typically, so hear me out because it would make a long day, but typically our retreats are like about two to three hours. So the possibility of killing two birds with one stone mm -hmm. where we do a SU retreat, and I'm making up times, but you know, an SU retreat goes from eight until two or three and includes lunch and then an adequate amount of time, two, three hours set aside that maybe even includes dinner where the local boards could also have their retreat. Wouldn't necessitate them doing it, but for the boards that you know, if you're already essentially waste, not waste, you're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> Alice, you're already dedicated. Oh, you're already, you're you're already, you're already you're dedicating, thank you, Chris. You're already, you're already dedicating a day to do something and then also, you know, do the board, the individual board retreat. It might make it even more um, attractive to some of the boards, maybe so not all. A, a carousel board retreat. Essentially. Yeah. Essentially, I mean, at, at the board's office. Yeah, it, but then for the boards, they're like, yeah, that really works for us. We can do both in the same day. And for the yeah, ambitious ones, that they want. You wouldn't necessarily have a bill at your, your retreat, which I think would be problematic. Oh, I see what you're not, saying. Not insurmountable. Yeah, well, so okay. But any, regardless, I think. I support a, a full board retreat. Yeah. In, in. I, but I think sooner. Um, because sooner. Just because if one of the goals is um, um, the community engagement and we want to have a response by June 19th, um, the training after that wouldn't be as much. By June 19th? Where did I think, do, do we have, want to have something out by June 19th? No, that was November. November was in November, November. okay. And I was going to say, to get a trainer right now, which be pretty. It wouldn't. Yeah, I think by, by, be tough by June, June. it would be hard, yeah, that's right what now. I was thinking. But. I mean, the next six, seven weeks are the busiest time of the year. Yeah, okay. People. And I also thought trying, trying, trying to pull together people over the summer would be really, I mean, August, 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 August is going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It will be. It's going to be hard in August. So. But the sooner you can get the date out, the better. So people can pull them if it's in. Do you have any thoughts about dates, Bill, and from, from a school calendar perspective? Uh, our, our August is the second worst month of the year. May is the worst. Yeah, yeah. Um, May until actually, it's six weeks this year. It's May to graduation. It's just really, really tough in the schools. And in August, we're ramping. Once we hit the first August first, yeah, the whole leadership team and we literally had that wall covered with dates from now until the start of school yesterday in here. And it's like we have something going every day. Right. So September. So but then if we try to do a September, then it's got to be a Saturday or something. Right. And then it's Could I back up? Yeah. If it's a training, yeah. and we're bringing someone in, does it necessitate administrators being there? If it's a training for school board members where you're not, you're not facilitating it, you're not, prof you're not conducting it, do, do, do you... The I actually administrators think it'd be, have no, to be, it'd be good for the administrators to receive the training, frankly. Right now, it's just, it, I'll have to go back to those dates. I just know in August, there literally isn't a day from Ju yeah. July 30th to right. till Labor Day. Uh -huh. Every day is booked. 
Is is a Saturday off the just off the charts or off the table? Because Saturday, in terms of folks getting off from work, is probably. It's asking a lot though for the administrators. I mean, it's, I, I couldn't. Uh, I would. I could do it. Uh, maybe depending uh, on the Saturday. I, I wouldn't want to ask my administrative colleagues because I know a lot of them are working Saturdays and Sundays just to get everything prepped. Mm -hmm. They're they're working long weeks in August. Well, I, I guess I would suggest that you and I try. Yeah, to but I think we can find something, out, and yeah. and I just have to look at the different days and. But I agree that getting the date out soon is important because people. I mean, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have people not there because of vacations right. anyway. It's just a fact. Mm -hmm. But um, you're not gonna have any administrators in July. Yeah. Um, do you think you're in France? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's an agreement. There's an agreement that was here before I came. No, no work happens Good. in July. Good. That is, and I tried. That's, that's, I had it for a couple of years. I broke it, and then we found out just by through experience. It doesn't. I never showed up to meet you by yourself. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. People came, but it was like, okay, this is. Not they threw rotten tomatoes at you the whole time. And all of a sudden, Bill was tripping a lot. Like, oh. Would uh, would folks be comfortable? That, so I I've put out some suggestions about what we could do that day. Do people have other things they want to suggest? Are, you know, I'm happy to contact these people because I do know them. I think that would be uh, and then good. figure out what their availability is and you know what costs might be involved, if any, and that kind of thing. We can take care of costs. No, I know that yeah. to a, to a point. To a point, yeah, but so. I think I think we. You, I'm going to be giving you a financial a little bit, so I think. Okay. All right. I would like to see it around community engagement. Me too. Okay. Me too. Yeah. All right. That's been on our that's been on our to do list for a couple of years, and so Matt, I think never got. I'd be glad to support you with if we can't get Nicole. I think I, I really appreciate Susan Clark's um, skills, mm -hmm. and I've seen her in motion. But I think having someone from outside the community, five communities, supporting this. Um, so I think you know I'd be glad to contact Bruce and some other people that have done the yeah, work. Yeah, sure. They all do the work together. They all mm -hmm. know what. Yeah. And I'd want Susan to be there, but I think the facilitator yeah. having someone outside of that is is there. All right. I want to be sure that we can provide some background for people if they choose to do it, with some reading or video, so short I just, video, so or we have. We, I've got plenty of those resources to already. I just sent Chris because he was asking while we we're standing here. Sitting here. I just sent you my lip review. Oh, yeah, okay. Because you want to know the resources, yeah. like go contact them if you would like to. Sure. Yeah. So, so that may not be the most enjoyable to read, but there are plenty of other resources. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure it gets out there to each person. Yeah. Um, and say that yeah. they're better off looking at something or reading something um, before There's a great retreat. one for Matt from his work he did up in Lindenville. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that pamphlet. It's like a 12 page. Piece. Yeah. So we'll try to figure out a date. We may, maybe yeah, we'll send out an email. Nobody has said anything about the end of June. Is that off limits like July? I think that's tough. I think it's too soon to try to organize because it's already almost May. So to get trainers and to try to oh, oh, schedule. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. And a lot of people will have their gym vacations already already scheduled or like, you know, so I don't. I don't think people are going to change their August vacation schedule for us. You're probably right. <laughs> yeah, that's probably wishful thinking. Oh, come on. So Matthew, maybe you and I can we can figure out a couple of techie ways to see what people are at. Yeah, that's right. Did, did you say I'm sorry, sorry, did, did, you you know August, did you decide that? <laughs> we're we're kind of tentatively okay. landing in August, but we got a lot of okay. a lot of things to figure out before we can land there, I guess is what, what okay. I would say. So we'll try to see what we can. Go off my camp for the day. Oh, that actually, actually might be a draw. Time for Lake Champlain, right? Yeah. And we probably could use the clubhouse for the larger Thanks. meeting. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. The, I only signed in one place. I mean, it's, it's got its own dock and so it's big. Yeah, location is also. The yard is big. big. I'd be tough for 40 people there. But I might be able to get a neighbor's camp for a long time. As long as there's buckets of margaritas and, <laughs> you know, we all set. Um... Okay, we're good. We're yeah. good over there. Okay, so non-bargaining contracts. I so guess. this is a little bit of an update. Um, and Kari, forgive me, but I remember you stating this a while ago. It was either last year when we talked about non-bargaining, and it really came from consensus of the group that was sitting here. 
uh, and maybe Stephen you recall this as well, but last year when I talked about non-bargaining, you'll see there's nothing on action. I didn't want to be doing action tonight. You talked about, we had a, the executive committee talk to me about finding a way to um, look for a salary scale or look at and do some research on salaries for non-bargaining folks. Because we're not just talking about administrators. There, there's probably about 50 people across the SU that are non-bargaining class. This came out of you expressed some concerns that we were out of market. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have held doing something on that, um, but then looking over the finances in the past month, we're doing pretty well. And so I'd like to go out, I'm going to put out an RFP, I'd like to put out an RFP that this board would approve next month to, for services for an outside firm to come in and do an analysis of our non-bargaining contracts. There's some good things about this, it'll look at our market rates. I can tell you right now, our head of custodians make below what the state wages are, and we lose people to the state. Um, I can tell you some places where we do okay. So I want you to know there's some there's some risk, and there's some good reward of knowing where we stand in competition, but there's also some risk of being below what It's the, not really risk, it's, it's, it's not, you might get some bad news. Right. Or not act on it. Yeah. Maybe good. So, um, and this would include everyone, including myself, um, my, as a superintendent's position, we give them all the Vermont salary information, um, have them look at outside competition, outside size of organizations that are being run, and saying what is the comparable salaries that are out there, and where should we be, and where should the relative market. And one of the things that, when I think about the principals, um, and well, the whole leadership team, they talk about, there are conversations about you know, what each other makes. And um, in my altruistic thinking, when I'm in that, I think of everyone doing the same amount of work. But the salary, the compensation is very wide. Um, and so, um, you know, I take someone like uh, Matthew Young at Doty, who we filled in with some summer work for the SU work that needs to be done, so he basically is working year round. And then I look at Stephen Dellinger Pate. There's a pretty wide spread, and those are the two ex extremes. In terms of the salaries? Yep. What are the amount of work they're doing? The salaries. Okay. So is it because Matt gets the fill-in work? It's, no, yeah. it's because of Just Matt. Case. Matt's got a small school, and so he does everything from behavior support to being principal. Mm -hmm. Where um, Stephen has half the SU in that building, student population, has mm -hmm. Five other, uh, one, two, three, four, five other administ administrative assistants that support them in running that organization. You know, it's not that it's necessarily more or less work. It's more responsibility. I would give that because there's more people there. But they're, you know, and so they what they'll do. I mean, a good outside firm will do a look at all that and try to scale it in a certain way. And I think that's appropriate for us. And for me, I think that will actually help with everything around here. I think that's going to be a six-month project. It's not going to affect this year's setting non bargaining contracts, but I think it's something that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, principals do, I mean, VPA, VSA, they all collect the data. We all see what, I mean, it's all public record anyway, so we all know what everyone makes in Vermont. And it's not classified information, so. But you have to analyze the school side or the system side. It, it, they'll give a point system and they'll say, you know, what's this task works that task. Come up with a quartile. Yeah, whatever. that's all that stuff. So, so you're thinking that you would bring us. Uh, we go out to an RFP in the next week, have a two yeah. week out. It's actually a request for information on RFP because it's information on the services they would provide. Okay. And then I'd bring you a proposal for a firm. We've yeah. looked at three or four firms that have done this for the for public entities and bring that back to us and then get that, well, as I said, won't affect this year's non-bargaining, but to bring that to really set it. I like this idea. Because the way you posed this last year, there was, some, there was risk and not knowing where we stood. Well, well, yeah. 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 So let me, um, when you use the phrase, um, it would help with things around here. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, because there's some animosity about what different people make. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to standardize it. Okay. When is it going to kind of standardize that? 
e even if it is internally, which it may not be, yeah, it, you, every once in a while you have to check to see how far you've drifted away from the market. Yeah, or and I can't say that, I mean, is it stand, in, in, theor in logic, yes, but that's logic by really the superintendent and the willingness of the school board. Mm -hmm. And it's not by market conditions. There's no market condition. I mean, there is market conditions because I look at and try to weigh it. Like when I look at, when I have a new principal coming in, we did this for Berlin this year, you remember this, Chris? Mm -hmm. I talked to the board about it. I said, you got someone that's coming in, it's got 11 years of experience. You're below what the average is for the si for a size school with plus or minus 50 kids. Mm -hmm. You're gonna lose this really good candidate if you don't get up to at least the average. And you guys did. But, you know, I think we shouldn't be getting surprised about that when there's a new candidate. We should say these are the appropriate salary levels so, we yes. should be at. It's a strategic issue. Really. Yeah. So if nothing else, we'll have collected all this material to refer to. Well, I think it's wouldn't. every year. I mean, it's... You have to keep up with it. Right. And the way we set salaries here is, um, <coughs> is just... it's. It's not a systematic way of doing it. It's a. Uh, in, in terms of the increase, is somewhat uniform. Is my my impression is that you make a recommendation that's I, uniform I, across I, the. I, I pretty much do because I don't want to. I don't want to have. I don't think they should because I think they're all working well and they should have it pretty well uniform. But the place that they start mm -hmm. at each school, just what we, what we went through last year. Yeah. I'm not really sure. About that, Chris. And, and I think it's usually tied to what the other contracts <coughs> end up being, right? What the the, 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 the bargain, the teachers, the bargain, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's and, not that, and the rate, the, the rate of increase of the administrators across the state of Vermont is not the same as what teachers is. Are is it lower? Uh, it's higher. Higher. Always. Especially higher. superintendents. Mm -hmm. well, well, I um, think it's good to have. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm a data junkie, but. Information is good. Yeah. Isn't there any merit-based factor in all, <clears throat> all of this? No. Could there be? If you decide to go there, but I will tell you that from my perception in the state of Vermont, because there isn't, that I know of, doesn't mean it isn't happening, but I don't know of any, you will probably lose some administrators. I don't, I, I don't, believe, I don't believe in merit-based I, I, I can talk based. about that at length some other time, but... Um, but there's a whole philosophy behind it. I think merit-based uh, hurts collaboration. To there's me, sort of because merit-based is about me. I don't want to get into it, but the, there, there's an argument around that that salary, title, and, and responsibility should be should all move simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, so there's yeah. But anyway, can I um, just go back to where you were talking about mm -hmm. the superintendent of the high school? In some, at least this is a message I got. Mm -hmm. In some sense, because he has other people, curriculum people, principal, principal. principal yeah, yeah. Uh, um, he has you know assistant principal and somebody looking at behavior and somebody else doing something else. In one sense, he carries a lot less responsibility. No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't say that more. I said more. Oh, I, well, I got the idea more. that he, in no. a sense, he carried less because. He had these uh, other people that were supporting him. No, it's more. Okay. He has I more. just, just want to make sure I had that no, right along. More. more. So, so just to kind of think that he would then just find a higher, higher salary. Well, that's, that's why we're going to ask. That's why we're asking. I, I want to ask an outside firm to do this work. Yeah. How much is say, that? How much is it, is it worth? Okay. Because I've done that myself in the way I've recommended. Starting salary levels, but I think it'd be better actually to have someone come in that will they'll look at classifications of jobs and grades and responsibilities and re number of people that report to you. And do you need a motion to issue the RFP? No, I don't need that. I just wanted to inform all of you of that and that we started on last night at East Montpelier and we're doing it all the way to. The last meeting will be Romney on the 10th, mm -hmm. where we're doing all the non-bargaining approval. Well, actually, it'll be Berlin, because of the way the calendar falls. Yeah. Okay. But we're trying to get it done real quick to get the non-bargaining contracts okay. approved. Except for Washington Central will be the 30th of May, because of where we fall for Washington Central, for this executive. So we're going to do that on at the next meeting? The next okay. meeting. All right. Okay. Is there anything else on that? 
I would like to talk to you about one of the employees at okay. the end of the meeting and executive right. session. Okay. Oh, and I shouldn't, I'll do it in my administrative week. Okay. Um, hiring process for special education staff, and actually it's probably more aptly titled hiring process. Um, but this did come up, I think as you all know, that uh, there was um, some special education hires that fell kind of in the interval between uh, meetings, and it's an issue that comes up apparently quite a bit, and not just with, with special education staff, but with various positions where you know, obviously it's a very competitive job market and, you know, if we, we can't act quickly in terms of making offers to good candidates, we stand the, the risk of, of losing them. Um, so I wanted to, to bring that back to the uh, executive committee and, and sort of ask, um, you know, what is our desired practice here? Um, yeah, I think there's different options. We could um, uh, empower the leadership team to, you know, basically make offer these offers to these positions and then ratify them after the fact. Um, we could have as a standing policy that those offers should go out um, with notification to the boards at the time. Um, you know, there may be other things that we could do. I guess I just, I'd, I'd rather avoid this sort of being a reactive problem like every year. Um, it just seems like we probably could come up with something that is just a good rule of thumb guideline for the administration to use, so. So our board meeting was timely last night. Okay. Because that's when we met. And I knew this was on our agenda. So we discussed it um, and had an explanation between Jen and Alicia about what the system is currently. And we like the current system. Okay. The current system being that when it comes up. So the current, it's, and I, I mean, I get this totally wrong. But there's a, for special education, there's a multi tier um, selection process mm -hmm. where there's a larger group that vets a large group of applicants. It narrows it down to, I don't know. You know, we've got... We only got four because there were only four. <laughs> well, anyway, however many openings there yeah. are, this they this larger group selects the pool of these are the best special educators available for the openings that we've got. And then there are um, local... So, for instance, I, I won't get it exactly right, but because we've hired one or two. One. One. Yeah. Um, then there's a, a, a local, I'll call it, a district um, um, hiring, committee. hiring committee, and it's our principal, I think Kelly was on it, there's a, there's a teacher, there was a, there's a community member, so there's a, a, a local group that looks at the um, candidate or candidates for our school, and then last night Alicia brought a recommendation um, that that group made to us. Um, so I mean, I, I would say that's the normal process. Um, that the out of the round thing is more. So let me say that okay, we went ahead before there was a recommendation brought to East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. That's why I had asked Matthew, who had asked all of you, because right now in special education, you and and hired. I haven't. I haven't offered. I haven't given contract checks. I haven't gotten through tonight. But yeah. I told them. I basically told the candidates, "You've got a job." Okay. Um, because I needed to have that because they had multiple options. On yeah. So SLPs, I just want you to know the types of positions we're talking about. It's not just special educators. It's SLPs, it's special educators, it's now math, physics teacher, um, you know, physics. I mean, they're just some hard places to get people. Um, world languages, people, and U32 has given us pretty broad authority from the U32 board. So for the U32 <laughs> board positions, I say that we've got this pretty certain we're going forward, we we'll bring your name to the board. Um, but it's in, it's even starting to creep into elementary educators. The, 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 the hiring pool is getting very shallow out there. 
Um, people are going to other industries that are not coming into teaching. And we're, and, and I talk to my colleague superintendents, so they're like, if you try to get a principal right now, you can't. Mm. You just can't, they're not out there. Didn't we even lose a librarian candidate? We, it, what, it, for it some reason, we lost another? three librarian candidates uh -huh. to the one we got for Rummy Doty. Uh -huh. We lost because we couldn't be fast enough. I mean, it's just, and it, was, it wasn't because we couldn't necessarily be fast enough. They were competing jobs and like, what's the best offer out there? Mm -hmm. It's right. that it's that quick of a hiring turnaround. Well, we got a classroom teacher that we wanted because of the because accelerated I, we process. Because ex I really accelerated. We were actually her. we one lost of our board lost members. Before her. One of our board <laughs> members is on another district. That this the person we hired was also their top candidate, and it's because the offer was able to come quicker from East Montpelier that we got the candidate. And this is what the I, hiring pool is. I like. would just put it this way that, um, and I guess I speak as a, you know, kind of director of an organization, but, you know, hiring is an administrative function. It's one that's delegated m more often than not, in my experience, um, to administrators. And I guess there's a, there's a practical consideration as I thought about this, it occurs to me that I don't want any impediment to stand in the way, any impediment that's not completely necessary to stand in the way of us hiring the best possible people for the school system. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm suggest I'm, I'm asking if um, there is a, a guideline or a policy or a practice we can put in place that would facilitate us moving forward with these things um, with the, the least amount of red tape possible, I guess, from a board perspective. Um, that's so, the question I'm asking. Okay, so I think there can be, but red tape is not the right word. Um, because I think when you have a small school, um, teachers are a significant part of the community, uh, and I think there should be a, you know, appeal for the teacher. Um, and uh, efficiency shouldn't trump that unless it's absolutely necessary, in my view. Because I think you have a teacher that comes in that, that just may not fit, and that has an impact far broader than it should, but it does, because mm -hmm. you're dealing with a small community. So is your board interviewing teachers? What? Is your board Yes, we do. Teachers? Really? Yep. And so uh, that would be my concern, is that you, know, you give up a lot for the sake of um, efficiency. Um, and it, I'm willing to give it up when it's necessary, but not when it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe trying to figure out what the necessity is uh, will be the thing that we need to do. Uh, maybe another thing that we should do is um, somehow, if we can write into a contract that uh, someone is not coming back, let us know as soon as possible, um, because then the earlier out, the better the opportunities. And is that true? It is, but um, we'd have to wait till we're into negotiations at this point. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I couldn't force this issue and wouldn't try. I just, um, but I just think it's a thing worth talking well, about. I, I so would say, say for Romney is the only one that knows. Just for a point of information, I don't say that any other way. I, I, the well, only thing I, I interject is we're very, so it depends on what you mean by administrator hiring. We're very, <coughs> our board's very comfortable if we know our principal, some of the school staff, and community members are on a committee that's making the, the decision. We're, we're okay with that. Um, and I think that kind of reflects where we're at now. Where we're right. Everywhere. Yeah. Um, so if it was going to be something um, l less involved than that, then I think there would have to be more discussion. Yeah, I think this is an issue we can come back to when we have more time also. I'm not sure it's, if it's going to be a challenge in the next, or will it be actually? Well, I mean... other hires coming up or...? Um, most of the... The hiring that's coming up right now that isn't that fast track will be Romney. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, Chris, I just learned of today we think we might have a special educator for Romney. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll be interviewing next week to know and we'll see what that works with timeline because I haven't talked to that person. Um, I, I guess one so the question I would ask, sort of um, um, just trying to you know play out the, the conversation is. Um, in my experience, hiring is a kind of, it, 
it's always a fallible process. It doesn't matter what you do. Like you always will get into a situation potentially where you hire someone who just isn't a good fit or doesn't work out for whatever reason, for reasons that you can't always divine during mm -hmm. the during the you know recruiting and interviewing process. Um, and so I guess I'm I'm not sure if uh, you know we've got we've got the hiring committee, you've got the educational professionals evaluating, trying to make these decisions. Um, I would just be curious to to know at some point like. You know what? What's what extra safeguard or what sort of extra assurance does the you know board's involvement at that level kind of add to the you know to the process? Um, so or if there ever has, I, I'd be interested to know if you know. And again, I'm I'm really talking at a hypothetical level, I guess. But I'm I'm sort of I'd be interested to know if um, you know there had been hires made that the board was involved with that that didn't turn out well. Also, I actually, asking a share story with one where the board was involved with that I think turned out really well. Um, and it involves our, our kindergarten teacher. Um, there was a um, two candidates, and it was at a time when the, our policy was that the board would have two candidates, and and you know, usually, I'll say almost always go with the recommendation, but in that instance, we did not, uh, and it ended up, I think, working out well. Mm. Uh, and, and it's been, you know, been not too soon, but how long was that? Male kindergarten teacher been with us eight years, ten years? No, he's only been with us for four years. No. Yes. You don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Four years? We get no. We get burned two. We get burned two, Chris. No, no, I'm talking about Ben Weiss. He's not a kindergarten teacher. Oh, first grade. Well, he was. He was hired as a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> okay. So, and that, and that was, it was an issue. So how long ago was that? If you know. That was before I was here. Okay, so, and it's and it's worked out really well. Um, mm -hmm. So. Okay, I mean, I, I guess my, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So the, and the other thing is that our contract gives a one-year, two-year probation period, and, and then basically becomes a tenure track. You, uh, you can only dismiss for cause, I think, at that point, right? No, that's not true. You can just not rehire someone. You can't not years? re. You cannot. No, you have to have. You have to go through a process, but you can go through the process. But the process being uh, focus yeah. assistance and. Okay, but that's a cause based issue. Let's not argue this right here now, Chris. Okay, I'm just saying. So, <laughs> so you're putting. So you're getting back. You mean you've cautioned me to say this to you. Okay, I'm but say it. it. You're in your trial mode. No, again. no, no. But the point is, is that it becomes a, a tenure track issue, and you know, it's not like unlike the private sector, you can hire and fire at will, uh, pretty much. It becomes it's a higher. It becomes a higher. Well, I don't know. Kari, so. Kari works with a union. They sort mm -hmm. of have a negotiated. Uh, it depends on the contract, right? But yeah. yeah. Yeah, obviously, if there's a union involved, it's more difficult. Um, we don't we don't have protected. It's just you have to go through the process. Yeah, and it's going to be scrutinized. Right. <clears throat> you know. So, so my point is that it's not a private, you know, private employer relationship, uh, where there are few far fewer protections. You would say, and the Vermont's an at-will state. Mm -hmm. I, I, so, I just, uh, from my point of view, I don't see why you would put extra authority on with the board because the boards are citizens they don't necessarily have any experience mm -hmm. in hiring and, and supervising professional teachers or other staff i mean i think that's it's it's nice when 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 we hired the principal bill made sure to involve us mm -hmm. but off, uh, ultimately he was bringing his recommendation about who the best candidate was yeah. I mean, he did that because it was a good way to get by it um, but we don't know the first thing about about evaluating teachers, candidates for te you know, teacher. It's just not our expertise. But we are the superintendent. Yeah. And that's what we. Right. And I think that's we what we hired the superintendent. That's what we hired him for. Yes, but didn't you have a search consultant? We hired a consultant. We we did, but we picked out a number of candidates, right? <laughs> and interviewed them, and then and then picked. So it's just. I'm just glad we haven't had to do five teacher interviews at Berlin this year. A lot of turnover this year in retirements. I, I just don't see what our board would add um, at some point. I think you've got to trust your superintendent and principal to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess what's the sense of the good? Obviously, we don't have consensus. Um, so, what then shall we do? Um, 
generally the chair, I you know, I'm, I don't know if anybody wants to suggest a way of resolving it, or I, we can come back, we can table it and come back to it another time. But yeah. it's, it, if there's a, an emergency, I mean, not everything's an emergency, um, but when there is, uh, I think that should be the exception kind of rule in terms of a hiring. Yeah, I mean, I, I, emergency is maybe the wrong word, but I, you know, we can predict that um, we will be recruiting for in you know, the various positions that we've been You're talking right. about. So I'll go right back to it. We're going to be in a special education for middle sex. This board is one that does the hiring. <coughs> mm -hmm. Middle sex would like to meet with them. Try to facilitate that when I can. I may not be able to. And, and you know, I, I, and, 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 and you've been good about it. Chris. Yeah, so hey, if, really you, if the board's it. not stepping up, right? Then but I mean, I'm going to be in a place, please. hopefully by March, May third, <coughs> with a candidate that looks good. I, I gotta say, do you have, do you have other offers, or are you applying for other positions? And I expect to hear a yes. And I'm going to need to go to kind of the same place we were here in April. Mm -hmm. I, I, I bring, I'm bringing you another candidate tonight because I interviewed them on Monday mm -hmm. for a special ed position. Um, you know, so that's just, and I'm going to get there with an SLP probably too. Um, we just haven't gone through the SLP process because mm -hmm. we haven't had any, we've had two or three applicants, but then we want to go past round one. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not going to hire to fill a position. With, with some of these special educators and SLPs, we're not doing the interviews as an as a executive committee. Is there could there be a difference between local board hires and executive committee hires for process to speed that up for you? Or is that? I think Matthew is bringing it up for a discussion of where we're at and, uh, with the you know the special education ones, and, and I tried. That's why I try to go through the different types of positions. Yeah. It, it, it you know we get we get past May. It's going to be any type of position in the issue. I mean, basically, basically it came up. Bill said, you know, I've got these candidates. Um, I, I need to make offers. The executive committee is not going to meet again until today. Um, and I came back and said, well, what did, you know, what did Stephen used to do? I literally said. Uh, and he said, well, <laughs> the convention is kind of bent to do X, Y, and Z. So that's kind of what we did. Yeah. Um, but then literally, like a few days later, you know, there was another, there was another one. You know, and I'm just thinking, like, what are we doing here? Like, or on an ad hoc basis, you know, every time we're trying to figure out if we can, you know, get word out to the executive committee and, and um, you know, make a provisional offer, but the contract doesn't get issued until, you know, I, I don't know what the right thing to do is. It just seems, um, uh, it's not really an efficiency issue so much as it's like, you know, if we're losing the best candidates because we're because of delays or, or hiccups in the system, I guess I would call it. Then, you know, that seems to be like an easily remedied um, issue potentially. So, but I mean, the other question would be: Do we lose them because of that, or because there's a better offer, like money-wise? It's a possibility I mean, for sure. Are, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess speed is certainly only one variable. It is, um, but it is, and I'm not disagreeing that it is a significant variable. It can be. Most people I've talked to is, we can usually, we, we're doing okay money-wise right now. We're getting, starting to get a little low, but. So in the interest of time, I'm going to suggest that we table this. We put it on the agenda for next time. We'll see if we can sort of maybe gather some more. I have some thoughts about like, you know, to figure out if there's a other practices or standards in the state that we can sort of, you know, look at or reflect on. Um, but it's just something I'd like to revisit and try to find some way of closure, even if it's settling on what we do now. Um, you know, some some form of closure about it. So, uh, okay. So, action items. Shall I make a motion for board orders? I would entertain a motion to approve the board. Order. So, um, uh, if it's all right, I'll make a motion for two board orders. Um, the first for 28 March 2018, approve the board order in the amount of $674,421.56. And the second, approving the board order of 25 April. 
2018 in the amount of one hundred and thirty one thousand four hundred ninety four dollars and sixty four cents. Got a second. Second. Discussion. I guess I wanted to ask Bill, and I um, I didn't ask you about this in advance, but Sorry. is it um. Is it inconvenient to have the borrowers maybe included in the, the packet when it comes out before the, the meeting? I, I know that's been discussed by other boards. Yeah, it happens at Berlin. Yeah. We could get there. I'm just trying to think. Like, I have a, I have some questions about the board orders, but I don't want to like spring them on you in the meeting. I'd rather sort of like, you know, get them to you in more in advance. And okay, um, none of these are particularly urgent. I don't mm -hmm. think it just occurs to me. That, yeah. yeah, usually what. Uh, but those happen, people they re re research them from a meeting and then uh -huh. send them back in the next week. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I won't. Do you have any questions about the orders themselves? Just because I had time to look at them, I got here early. So um, I was just curious about first student. We have the main contract and then we have um, uh, tech buses and lake buses yeah. and a sped chair bus and an orange bus and. All these other things that seem to be outside the contract. So they're within the contract, but they're tracked in different. They're paid in different payments. Okay. Um, and there's just a couple people. I was curious who they are, like Benjamin Merrill and Sally Hall. And, so Sally yeah. Hall's our HR coordinator. Okay. So she's probably getting some mileage. Lots of yeah. Yeah, of and it. all these things. Ben Merrill's our outside public consultant who's doing all our reports and all our SLO work and. Now designing some other reports for us as well. Graf Gra he has a graphic designer that works for him through Mad in Mad River Valley. I can't remember her name. He's out of Randolph. He's working with about five or six school systems. Mm -hmm. We've moved over to Ben to help us do all this work. And he's doing a fabulous job. And he comes from being the mar lead marketer for BTC and the Vermont State Colleges before that. Great. And then the last one I had was just about paying Green Mountain Behavior for PBIS. I'm just curious, like, sort of what they're providing to support that. Green Mountain Behavior does a lot of our work. They do our work with um, our students. You'll see them in some of the local contracts as well for um, ECBA, which is our behavior support analysts, and some of our behavior interventionists, as well as helping us with um, our implementation making sure we're doing it with fidelity with PBIS. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions or discussion? Let me see your last name. I should be listed. She hasn't she all of the day? Do you just want to kill your last name? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. asked me to put here. Oh, that's right. Can't all those in favor of approving the March 2018 and April 2018 board orders, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Uh, approve new hires. So I bring you a fourth candidate. There were three that um, Matthew had sent to you, but the three candidates that are in your packet is Ashley Gilstead, who will be taking a point eight position at EMES. Natalie Whitefield, who is taking um, full-time position at Berlin and then the next two people Jessica Johnson who's in your packet will be our alternative coordinator alternative program coordinator and the special educator for that is the one I just handed out which is Brian Flynn it says see attached resume I'll tell you Brian has worked for about 20 years at Missisco Valley Union High School in an alternative program setting as a special educator comes highly recommended I uh, met with Brian Monday afternoon with Kelly. Um, and all these folks, uh, as Stephen talked about the process of them through that process of vetting with committees at the building and the full building, actually the leadership team this year for the first time decided to do all initial round of interviews together. They like that idea. Um, and as we debriefed it here in this room, they said it was great because it was a little way of all of us looking at it and saying, where do people fit the best? And let's go ahead and go out and have interviews. And there were some people that came out of that process that didn't go forward. So and it's second. Jenna and Brian for the new... For the new alternative program. program. Yeah. And that's, right now, that's high school. 
Right, yeah, it's seven or, through nine. Seven through nine. Okay. Yes. It'll be serving. Okay. But if we're looking at that, I mean, in years, as we talked about it this past year, mm -hmm. before, it'll probably start to get some elementary. So is this the uh, program that Kevin Bushing yep. advised on? Yeah. 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 But yeah. not always wanted to bring students. So I'm assuming it actually goes to actually on 18. What? It says 19. I'm assuming August 18. Uh, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Our, our goal would assume 18, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all for FY19. Okay. It might have been written on there wrong. It might have started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We want her to start. Yeah, we want her to start. <laughs> right. You don't want to give her a year vacation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? No. Is everyone comfortable with moving these as a slate? I move that we um, hire the recommended uh, folks that uh, have been forwarded to us in the various positions uh, as special educators um, in both the alternative program and at WCSU. Is that covered? Is that covered? Thanks for me. They're all, okay. they're all at WCSU. Right? Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving these hires, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Superintendent report. So first I want to uh, apologize for not getting you a written report. Things were just a little going a little too fast. Um, the first thing I want to point out to you is that on page nine, at uh, page 10, as I pointed out to you before, uh, there is a calendar here. We try to do what there is, I'm sorry, on page nine is the remainder of the school year, and page 10 is next school year. Uh, this is using our template that we've used before for this past year for carousel meetings, so September, October, February, and June, with also two supervisory union board meetings, one in March for reorganization and one in December for budget adoption. So that's just kind of, it's kind of kept our pattern. Mm -hmm. And then we're starting to try to put other committees, policy, school quality, and school start time. Uh, school start time doesn't have a regular meeting yet. Um, policy and school and school quality do. We'll need to add negotiations on here. Um, and I'm forgetting one other committee that will need it, that needs to be added. Negotiation should only be a couple meetings anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, healthcare is coming back up. I know. Thanks. There are. I'm on negotiating. Governor. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm missing the last one. But those, those, we're trying to get all that set for all of you and, and get that out because as we learned last year, not having a calendar is worse than having a calendar and having things move. Mm -hmm. So, I really, I really appreciate it and the work that it takes to put. To get it together, yeah, and it was helpful to see it. At a so, if you think this is in pretty good place, I actually asked Krista not to send out any appointments yet. I know people like to have calendar appointments and invite invitations, uh, since we're all seem to be running off of devices these days of some sort, keep our calendar. So, if this is okay with you, realizing there might be some movement, we'll start getting invitations populated out electronically to folks. <coughs> Sounds good. You just wait on the school quality. Yeah. The one thing I think is we're probably not going to meet every month. But right. I, know every month is I told her just to populate right now. I just, she asked yeah. me about that. Well, we can talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. So there will be some of those things that we know we don't know already that will happen. Um, just a couple items to note. Uh, we have started the hiring process earlier this year. Um, one of the things, as you know, has been my goal every year is to get contracts out early and earlier uh, because there's a 30-day window in the negotiated agreement. So the sooner that we can get out with contracts, as Chris was alluding to, the sooner we can get to a hiring process. And I can tell you that it's a good, good ribbing between superintendents about who gets out there first because we know we're all racing each other. Because that's where the hiring is going now. Days, it's really a competition among each other. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we need to start thinking about other ways of building our bench and building. We did a nice job of that with special educators last year. We were at three pair educators that we supported in education who had either a license in another area and we helped them get an endorsement in special education and become special education teachers this past year. Uh, 
so we need to start thinking about more of that, even though we do collaborate with, we have two teachers, candidates that will come to U32 next week that are in-house interns through either the, the TAP program, which is at Champlain College, which brings people from a second career mm -hmm. into education, or one of our partner universities that we have interns there here. So that's working for us. Um, it's just we need we need more of that. Um, do, do student teachers still that though? Just that, that's what that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. In terms of student teachers, student, yeah, okay. same thing. Um, the other thing that's um, that we're we're in a a place of right now is we're really already starting to program for next year as I told you earlier the leadership team we're doing as as early as we ever have of thinking about um, our new induction program we've had an induction program but expanding it for new teachers we're finding we could use a week or more than a week we have a week right now almost for every teacher before they come in of training they need to go through They're, we're just not finding candidates and it's not a lack of the candidates trained from the pre-service um, point of view, but it they're just not to where we need them to be able to enter day one into the teaching profession. So we need to do a lot of training, and we're, we're actually talking about setting up a training for the first year or two of outside work that the new candidates have to do. Um, the work that we're really doing is we're getting a lot of good recognition now out there by districts in Vermont and outside of Vermont. Um, about the work that's happening in this district around student learning outcomes or around proficiencies, but we're having to train folks because they don't have that training, they don't come with it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're having to do, uh, right now, for an example, how much teacher that comes in, if they don't have the right training, they need to have responsive classroom, which is a week's worth of training. They need three to four days of induction. They need a math lab school, and we probably need to add a literacy lab school. And a math and a literacy lab school are a week each, and like a full week? Yeah, a full week. And then, so we're talking three to four, and just need to have this. Um, and then when we think about someone that is at a high school level, um, I'm probably, I'm, I'm saying this early, but Kari, we got the second year of the grant on project-based learning. Last year we had all our seventh and eighth grade teachers trained that way. We'll have all our ninth and tenth grade teachers developing curriculum in a project-based approach. Those are two, that's a one-week training right there two days of restorative practices, which we require of all high school teachers, and then three days. And you know, yesterday we were able to go up to five days of our own induction of other things, just to know how to run your grade book, you know, how to use the computer system around here, how do you, how do you just operate? Uh, so it's, we're finding a lot of work in that. Um, and the last piece that I'll give you is that we learned Thursday before break, or Wednesday before break, that the five elementary schools qualified as rural education schools, which they've never qualified for on the federal level. It's called REAP, Rural Education, I forget what the A is, but it's program. Mm -hmm. Where usually there were only a few school systems in the state of Vermont. So we didn't add the actual money award, but during vacation, Jen, Lori, and I took some time away from vacation and got the application in by Thursday. It was a pretty fast and furious. We'll hear by July first the amounts, uh, but it looks like it's going to be around eighty to ninety thousand dollars each or total. Total. And is it dedicated to a certain purpose? Actually, we didn't even have to write a purpose in there, but we, we, we came to consensus pretty fast around this table. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're supporting this okay. <laughs> through job embedded professional development. Yeah. <laughs> so we might be bringing a third job coach. I mean, as I told you, we need to give you an update of the job coaching, but it's not. We'll, two full-time positions, it's parts and pieces, and using some consultants with job-embedded training, and that's what we've been talking about. How did you come to qualify this year? I got a letter from the U.S. Department of Education to tell me that we qualified. That's literally what happened. So and just they issued it to us? They issued, I came in my email, the somewhere the went to, you know, somewhere that middle of the week, you yeah. know, I hadn't been staying on top of my email, you could, everyone knows how I do my yeah. email. And it was like, I saw U.S. Department of Education, and I get something from them like two or three times a week, so I didn't pay a lot of attention to it, and I clicked on it, and I was like, oh my word. And I go and look up on the table, and I'm like, total all up, I'm like, yeah, I think we put aside some vacation days right now, and not do vacation, and we do some work. Okay, thanks.
So a couple of us are going to find some other time mm. for vacation. So that's my quick one. I do want to get it written up so all the boards have it, and I'll get it written up. I can put that aside. Okay, thanks. Uh, everyone comfortable moving on to the director's report? Are there any sure. uh, questions or reactions? Two, it starts on page 11. Mostly about assessments. Yeah, and they decided to do this because there have been questions in some of the local board meetings about assessments. So they said, let's do a report there. Yeah, I, I emailed them and wanted to know. Right, I think there was one of them, Dorothy. Yeah. It was one of them, but it was not the only one. Yeah. So is there a timeline about the, the building on the, uh, the, the read sentence? We're continuing to examine and build on our assessment practices in these and other SLOs. So we can effectively monitor student progress. Is there a timeline or just? Yes, there is. There's a whole timeline yes. that starts from the beginning of school to. If you're, I'm not sure what you're asking about the timeline. I it, in terms of, it sounds like there's still the, you're still in the process of developing some assessment practices. We have a lot of assessment. I mean, we the, the thing that we're getting to to break this out a little bit further, but I'll try not to go too far astray, is when you think about curriculum. Um, You've got your curriculum, and then you build your assessments, and then you build your instruction. We're pretty solid on the curriculum path. These, we, these SLOs, along with the standards that you see up there, each of those have performance indicators built from pre-K to graduation. Mm -hmm. So the targets are pretty well built for almost everything up there. That's amazing that we've got. I've never seen it done that fast for that many. The, the teachers are, are, deserve a lot of credit. It's really solid. Now we have to build assessments that measure those at a deep level and how kids are performing. This is where we get back to the monitoring of the proficiency-based report card. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have some common assessments, they don't all have to be common, but we have to have some to say what's our calibration, just as Stephen was saying in the board observation. I need to be able to say if we're all fifth grade teachers, let's have some assessments that are common so we know that we're in calibration with each other. So that, that right now is the work to be done. There are some, when you see STAR 360, or Fonis and Pinnell, or DRA2, we're able to get some off the shelf pieces that do that. There are some, there are a lot of places where there's, we don't have off the shelf, and we've gotta bring teachers together to build those assessments. It's a lot of work. You know, it, it's really building what you used, what you may have thought of when you were in school as a program and you had the textbook. We're basically building all that because there aren't ones out there. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? Financial report. Okay, so if I have you go to page thirteen. By the way, Lori's on vacation. That's why she's not with us tonight. Uh, I'm sorry we're going late. I'll work on my time management skills. Um, one of the things that we've been doing some update on salaries and benefits, uh, and we're starting to close down here in the supervisory union. You'll see that we've had a little bit more income of $3,500 here in April. And um, we've had some places where we've had some transfer and personnel or personnel out that we've had some savings. Uh, and that gives us the 19000 But currently, we're looking to be about $25,000. Um, as you can see down there, this current year of operations. <coughs> and that's the money I'm proposing we tap for the analysis of the, having an outside consultant come in and do the analysis of the non-bargaining contracts. So um, that leaves us at 223 which is 2.6%. But to me, that's a good place for us to be. I know we do a lot of overhead flow, flow through money and we go <coughs> for special education. So the money's gonna come from the locals to pay for that. So having that small percentage is comfortable for me where in other places you've all heard me say different things for your mm -hmm. locals. So I'm sorry for my denseness no. here, but so let me reflect that back to you and make sure I'm understanding yeah. correctly. So, um, you're projecting a two hundred twenty-three thousand five hundred eight dollar uh, reserve and at the end of the year at this point, right? 
And that's that's um, not counting twenty five thousand dollars that you're saying. No, there's twenty five thousand dollars in there right now. See how it says subtotal current year operation. I do see that. Yeah, we're twenty five thousand dollars better than what the budget said we should be right. right now. Okay. I'm not saying that that's going to be the total price tag for doing the analysis and uh -huh. the bargaining, but that's where I'm going to propose we get the money from because right. there's savings coming out of this year. Okay. I was conservative. I think you all know me well enough. I run I run pretty conservative. I wasn't going to go do an analysis without knowing that we had somewhere from the budget mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's what I'm going to recommend to you next month. Okay. Is that I'm not going to go over that figure. I don't know exactly, but some of our preliminaries is it's over ten thousand dollars to do the type of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it can be up in the twenty thousand dollar neighborhood. Yeah, so sure. I feel like we have it. Let's use it and get something good out of it. Okay. Thank you. I don't remember ever thinking about this, but it does make sense that if we use four percent as the target for the fund balance. Uh, for the schools, there would be something less for the SU since we just don't have the infrastructure for right. schools. Right. We don't need it. Yeah. We don't need it. And, and we know we're going to get the money. I mean, we're, there's so much money flowing through the budget. You know, we have a million two in infrastructure. Maybe that's something we should be doing. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Yeah. Okay. I think of that as a number. Okay, uh, before we move into executive session, I do just regarding the next, uh, the schedule for the next board meeting, the next executive committee meeting, I should say. Um, I just want to note that I'm, without going into detail, scheduled to have a medical procedure on May 24th, several days before the executive committee meeting. Uh, I expect to be fully recovered by the 30th, but there's a possibility that I wouldn't be, so I'll just coordinate with Kari in the, uh, on the off chance that I can't be here that day. Um, okay. and so just to give you all a heads up about that. So. Okay. Yeah. Would you want to go back home? Uh, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible it would affect my voice, actually. Oh, so yeah. maybe that I wouldn't be able to, yeah, participate um, I, by phone either. Yeah, we'll you see. Can sign What's that? Yeah, good video. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do it more <laughs> Morse code. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Um, Blink your eyes. Oh, can I just say something? I'm sorry, I forgot in my administrative. Yeah, sure. I think you all received an email because I sent it out to WCSU all, but Ann Carr is retiring in two mm -hmm. in a week and a half. Um, she's retiring on the fourth, and uh, has not has asked for very little ceremony. Um, she was just kind of wanted to end, and we're trying to respect her wishes. Slip away in her sunset. Wishing the very best. Yeah. Yeah. She's done 20 plus years of dedicated service mm -hmm. to her students. What's the date? Next, a week from this Friday, the 4th. I believe it's the 4th. I could be off. That's fine. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, what do you want? Yeah. Um, no. What would anyone like to move? That I'll we'll move that we go into executive session. For a person over there. Second? Do you want to be second? Uh, 